But the idea behind the Rewind project was to make all the incredible local TV archive that we have, um, and we have access to as BBC staff, we wanted to make that available to the public. Um, I mean, to make that happen has been a big effort, and it's, it's involved a lot of BBC Northern Ireland working together. So from selecting and compiling the original film reels for digitization, we've had to then link that material with all the cataloging information. Then we've had to develop systems for processing that material and allowing us to do some metadata enrichment on it, which also includes some automatic metadata enrichment with you know, uh, speech to text, things like that. Um, finally, also the site design then to enable the audience to discover that archive as quickly and easily as possible. Um, you know, a lot of people work really hard to get our old film cans into a state where we could give them to audiences essentially. Um, Patricia, I'll let you know a little bit more about how we actually then manage the process from there. Yeah, um, editorially, we set out to recomply the material. We weren't going to change the past, but simply ensure that our online footage would um, adhere to editorial guidelines and be fit for public consumption. Um, the um, audience reaction has been phenomenal, really, really positive. Um, most of the material was actually broadcast before people had recording devices. So they were seeing their relatives, their friends on television for the first time. Um, for example, we had a mum in Craig Avon um, whose son um, sadly had passed away at an early age. And there she was seeing him full of life, smiling. It was just wonderful to get her reaction. Um, there was a, a trio of granddaughters hearing their grandfather speak for the first time. Um, he'd only ever been a black and white picture on the wall. And suddenly here was this man speaking and they were very animated, very excited. Oh, you could just feel how excited they were uh, about Papa, hearing Papa. And another example was the famous County Tyrone um, donkey called Fanny. Um, <laughs> Its owner, uh, Mrs. Moan, had bought the donkey to deliver the full milk um, cra uh, cans down the, take them down the very narrow uh, pothole filled lane to the uh, lorry to pick up. So suddenly we were seeing this lady and this famous County Tyrone donkey for 40, 50 years after the event had happened. Um, the rewind, I mean, it's contained decades of local history and um, once that became, uh, once that was only available to archivists, but um, now it is available at the touch of a button and I know it has been a joy to many people. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of challenges. I mean, um, yeah, the, what is deemed acceptable has changed over time and I think you have to be aware that there are editorial guidelines and standards now, but also we don't want to edit the past. So that ability to kind of, I suppose, let, let people know what they're watching, that it is from a different era, um, but we present it as it was broadcast at the time because that's an important historical record. Um, <clears throat> I would say the other challenge is, you know, due to the the local history of Northern Ireland. You know, there's a lot of very sensitive material in our archives, so we have a duty of care still to all, all the people who experienced that firsthand. So again, you know, that, that's been a real challenge for our team who've been complying the material. You know, beyond that, I think there are, there are all the sort of quite standard challenges with the archive of, you know, cleaning up the material, digitizing it. Obviously everything has to, has to be gone through in real time and there's an awful lot of archive so yeah you know uh, that's that's required a real determination and dedication from the whole team but um but yeah i think i think that the sensitivity of presenting the past in the present it, it is, a, is a real live one but um again not editing that or censoring it in order to do so i think is 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 a big challenge Absolutely. I mean, I think one of the dangers of working with archive is that you just 
get completely lost in it. You know, I, I think, um, you know, I mean, there's there's obviously lots and lots of great stories that we've kind of discovered in there that we maybe wouldn't have been aware of because they're not the major news stories. But also from that historical point of view, I think probably, probably a lot of us are guilty because we have lived through the history of thinking we know quite a lot about it and actually going back through the archive makes you see that things were not perhaps how you might have remembered them. So yeah, it's been been really, really eye-opening. And again, hopefully in making this publicly available, we can provide that service for the for the whole audience. And I think I I think that um seeing, for example, punk hairstyles and you think, oh my gosh, I was that person. You know, I mean that that is actually quite funny. Uh, looking back at the time that I grew up in, um, in the 70s and the 80s, and the music and the style and the fashion, um, it was just a lovely wee trip down memory lane. It has been, um, it's been lovely. <laughs>